What's up, y'all? We have a uh, lock that was brought in to get a key made for it. This is off of a Suzuki something or other. Uh, it actually uses the DC3 or the X121 key blank. Now these, uh, back in the day, it's very common to just impression a lot of these. There's no sidebar, uh, nothing funny like that. It's a simple six wafer lock that uses depths one through four and uh, on this DC3 key blank. Now, one thing about these key blanks is a lot of times these come nowadays, these come nickel silver. It makes them a lot harder to impression when you have a nickel silver key. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I pulled the code series for that. The code series starts with U as an umbrella, uh, 3000 through like 4500 or something. We don't have the code on here. If he would have pulled the passenger door lock, it may, may have been likely that the code may have been on it, but this is off like the tailgate or something. The cap is crimped on. On some of these, you can uh, peel the cap, and I likely have uh, the caps for these to replace it, but I don't want to peel the cap on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna impression it with a Lishy cutter. Um, but what I did is I pulled the code up to check which card is used. And uh, the original key, we can see right there, the original key had the code on it and um, these older cards. I don't know if you order a card nowadays, but it gives you just a ton of information on these cards there's a ton of information there showing you you know how to cut the key what to do blah 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 which series to use if you need to use shims um, and all the code series for these but basically what we're looking at is just to verify that it is one through six and one through four for the depths so of course with uh, most wafer locks like this the number one cut is not a cut so Anything that marks on the key as we're impressioning it is going to automatically be a number two. Now, I did find one leftover key that's not nickel silver. This is just a, uh, you can see this is for a Colt. This is actually kind of an antique key. I don't know if I want to use it or not, but I'm going to. Uh, no, let's don't. Let's just use this key. These are still plenty available. I don't know if you can get them non-nickel silver, but I've got a ton of nickel silver, so... Even though it's harder to do, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, chuck it up in the vise here with hopefully our plate that we have to hold the lock in. Hopefully it'll fit one of these little doodads. And uh, we are gonna impression this with a Lishy cutter. I could impression it just as easily with a file or anything else, but since for video purposes or whatever, we're just gonna use the Lishy cutter. Pretend like this is out in the field where you just walked up to the vehicle and have to make a key for it so let's see how it does okay so on any automotive on most automotive not any automotive most impressioning situations we're going to do a chisel cut and that's sharpening one side to it's got a kind of a razor edge and when we chuck up the lock in our plate here we want to have the uh, pins up of course if it's on a vehicle you're just gonna have to reach in and feel to see where the pins are so it looks like looks like the pins are on the bottom so we're gonna want to go like that um, and uh, let's go ahead and I've got this key clamped up I'm gonna go ahead and put a razor edge or the chisel edge on it so I don't know if this particular lock, because this is the hatchback, most door locks turn both ways. Some hatchbacks only turn one way. And if I had it here and I was turning, I would want the high side or the non-angled side, maybe assuming that it turns clockwise, I'd want to put the chisel this way. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down on the vise and we're going to prep this. Now, back in the day when we did a lot of these, uh, all the common keys like Fords and stuff like that where you impression them. A lot of cars back during that era you could have impressioned. Uh, we would keep these keys prepped like in your downtime in the store. You would prep some keys to keep in your truck so you wouldn't have to do this out in the field. But of course you can do it out in the field just like I'm doing. Just a little bit easier so if we look really close what we're doing there 
we're putting a uh, a sharp edge on it and uh, let's go to our more gentle side of the file you want to kind of get it as shiny and smooth as possible so you want to use your smooth edge so you don't have any weird marks going on there almost You want to be careful not to knock it down further than uh, the actual height because you don't want to mess up any possible one cuts in the key. So there we go. That is sufficient preparation. Dang it, focus. So yeah, it's just got kind of a sharp edge. So when we turn it, we're hoping that the pins or the wafers, whatever's in here, I think it's wafer, I don't know. Uh, will uh, mark it a little bit better. Just focus. What is wrong with you, camera? Uh, this is a Suzuki, so it's foreign. Um, that looks too small. Datsun, Toyota's way too small. Chrysler. Chrysler does not fit. Let's try Foam. Foam. Foam works, Ford American. And uh, we want to make sure that I have my wafers on the upside. Yeah, okay, so wafers are all this way. And we're going to go ahead and clamp this up. Leave a little bit of room on the back in case the, in case the cam, when it's turning, might hit. Of course, if it's in the vehicle... Don't have to worry about that. It should turn regardless. Again, we don't know which way this guy goes. I'm going to assume it just turns to the right, but I may be wrong about that. And let's get started. We've got our lishy. We're going to go ahead and cut this. Now, again, we've got six, six wafers or six pins. And... Uh, let's just give it a go see what we got so insert it now it is kind of floppy in this because it's not not a faux am if it was a faux am it would be tighter so typically in this case you know in the car it's not going to be nearly as floppy it'll have that clip you could keep sometimes especially for certain ones the common ones that i used on this i always kept a clip with this so that i could actually clip it on i don't have one of those but I'm just going to hold it. Oh, too loose. Too loose. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and start my, my rocking back and forth. We're going to turn. Focus. Thank you. Why is my camera not acting up right? So I'm going to turn both ways, even though I don't know which way it turns. Pushing in, rocking up and down, and turning all in the same kind of motion here. We're going to get some real good initial marks. You want to be really good with this first set of marks as you're doing this. So, hello, hello. Okay. Yes, we're getting some good marks on, uh, looks like we definitely have, now be, be very careful when you're impressioning car locks because of the, the dust shutter or the, the parts inside the very face of this can actually throw you off. Like this looks like a mark here, but it's actually there. So, and, uh, there's a very light mark on, so this would be one. That's definitely a cut. Uh, that is not marking real well, so we're going to leave that one alone, but we have some great marks on uh, one, three, four, five, and uh, nothing on the tip. So we will get our lishy. Now I am, uh, we're going to have to do this. I've said this before on lishy videos. Get this focus lock off. Focus lock off. 
I've said this before. Sometimes you can, you know, I'm, I'm right-handed, so it'd be naturally easier for me to do it this way, but when you have this lishy cutter, you know, the key doesn't really exactly sit correctly when you're doing it, so sometimes you do have to flip it this way to get to work. Um, another thing to do is pretty hard to see as you're cutting this. Hold on, block off. Um, but we are going to go ahead and uh, just nick those areas that we see a mark beginning in. So that would be the first position, a little number, number two cut right there. And twist this around. Uh, we've got faint marks on three and four, but we've got a really good mark right there on uh, five. So I'm gonna use that line at the top to kind of match up with that mark, plus just kind of guesstimating where it should be. That's, uh, there we go. So two, two. Now we did have good marks on three and four, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring them all down to two, if I can see them, we're going to guess it's right in that area and in that area. So it uh, looks like we got two, one, two, 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 one, two, one, two, 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 one. That is likely not the bidding, but that gives us, uh, and also I do have my impression file out here, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of hit the edges. Uh, the only bad thing about this is impressioning files with the real fine tipped impressioning files like this, we can see I broke the tip off in my knee one day, that was fun, um, but it leaves a smoother finish, so right now you know, we have that kind of clip that we just did. It's going to make subsequent marks a little bit harder to see. Anytime you're impressioning with either a key machine or a lishy cutter in this instance, you're going to have a little bit more difficult time seeing those marks on the key after you start cutting, number one, because we don't have that sharp edge any more to do anything with that, that marks really well. So always on your next few cuts, you're gonna start having more and more trouble, especially as you get to the thicker part of the key. But we're gonna go ahead and put the best marks that we can here. And zoom in, zoom in. while my camera does this. There we go. Uh, angling it back and forth so that we could possibly see any marks that we have going on. Nothing still on two. Looks like number three is giving us a little mark. It's really, really hard to see in this camera. especially since it's not focusing. Uh, but I can see right in this area, a very faint mark on three. So that looks like that may be a cut deeper. Number one, number one may very well be, I'm gonna leave it alone for right now because that may just be a false mark. Um, but looking at it through my eyes instead of through the camera lens, uh, to me it looks like number three has something going on there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut down our number three right now. Let's see where were we? One, two, 
three. Let's go ahead and cut that down to a deeper. It's not much deeper. There we go. Uh, so now what we'll have is uh, one, two, three, two, two, one. One, three, two, two, one. Okay, zoom back out. And let's see what happens. When you start getting close, your plug right here will start turning. Your key may turn a little bit and start binding. At that point, you will be getting a lot better marks. It's always hardest kind of in the middle of the key to get the marks. But once you get close, you should start getting deeper marks. I feel like that's turning nicely, a little bit more than it was. So I feel like we're actually already pretty close to, to getting this. So I'm holding it still because it's wobbly. So I'm just going to... I'm going to rock it back and forth a few times here, and let's see what we have once again with Mark's, not Mark's Lock Company, but Mark's, what? there we go. Uh, okay. Looks like we're still marking on three. If we look at the bottom of that, Like, it looks like, now you gotta be careful with fake marks, but look at that little notch right. I know it's hard to see, but if you can, if you can see it through my eyes, I can see something going on there. And also, if you hold it just right, we can see something going on in number, what is this, one, two, three, fourth position. Yeah, there's a definite mark right in the center right there. I'm just gonna rotate it both ways. See that one, two, three, fourth position. See that little mark right in the center of it? So we're gonna go ahead and cut that down as well. We're gonna leave everything alone except for, uh, we're just gonna cut this number four, what was this, number four? We're gonna cut it down. It's not overly easy to do nibbling with this. I mean, it is and it's not. It saves a lot of it saves a lot of file work. So now what we have looks like two one three three. Maybe a little bit messed up on the spacing there, but two one three three two one. Uh, again, with the file, we're gonna hit that. You could just as easily have a you know brush with you and brush it off, but. I typically find that the file part just works, especially since most of the time you're going to be using. Oh, hey, look at that. Okay, now it's tight. So we've got something right, but we've got something not quite right because it's still just a little bit stiff right there. I'm going to turn this way. I can feel a little bit of resistance. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of a resistance going on right in that area. So I'm gonna turn it both ways and hope that we get some good marks going on. Let's take a look at it. Through there. Oh, definite mark on uh, wafer number three. Got a huge shiny spot right there. I'm not sure again if you can see it or not, but rotating it back and forth, you can see a nice shiny highlight right there that means that it's almost on it. It is almost on it. It's obviously right there on it. We are just off a little bit. And this one is actually shallower, just a hair shallower than that one. So we just have to we just have to nibble. enough that's enough 
Ooh. All right, it's a lot smoother, so that was probably it. Uh, now, at this point, I've got a code machine where I'm just going to go. Now that I've read it, I think this is 21334. Most automotive keys have a max maximum adjacent cut of um, two. So most automotive, you can't have a one next to a four. That looks pretty deep to be a three because this skips from here to the here. Two one three three two one, possibly two one four four two one. That would be odd. Some of these older cars using these keys did not have a max though, so it may very well not. Um, we can before we move over to the key machine. We could go ahead and maybe complete this key, and by doing uh, this, we're going to line up that mark right here. See that center mark that helps you line up for your other side so in this case we would line it up with this take out that skip number two go to number three number three we're gonna have to flip this over again because it's uh so this is a left-handed lishy cutter dang those left-handed lishy cutter cutting designers so again, line that up and knock that out. Center, center, okay. And center on position, what is that? Five, five, uh, two. All right, and let's see how well that works. We may have to go a little bit deeper. Uh, and again, I've got a code machine, so I, I'd prefer. You now, if I was out in the field, I could we could get away with this. We could clean this up real well. Uh, I'd never give out a key like this. This is only your test key. That's kind of one of the downfalls of using uh, the chisel edge method is you do kind of burn a key, but you know that should be factored into your price. This just makes it quicker and easier to file. Um, but again, ideally you would have a code machine or a clipper. These older keys, it was very common to use like Curtis clippers, stuff like that. All right, and uh, we are on it. But again, just like before, when we were close, but not quite, it is just very sticky. Like, ah, uh, ah, uh, that's going. Uh, uh, okay, it's not turning, it's turning one way more than, okay, there it goes. So, just being careful not to bend the key. We're going to look back, see where our issue lies on this side. I uh, got a nice shiny spot right there on three. So, let's knock it down just a bit more. Once we code cut this, okay. Once we code cut this on the actual machine, which this looks really good. I mean, that's a really good key right there. You could easily finish this off with this uh, or start another key. Still a little bit tight. So let's, let's go ahead and get it marked again. Uh, tight not too tight a lot looser than it was but that should definitely give us some kind of marking going on all right we got a, a real high highlight this is a spacing problem looks like looks like we got a real high highlight on one looks like I may have missed my my one cut right there that is correctable so we're gonna correctable it uh, by going uh, over just a bit and uh, basically we're going to be widening that cut just a bit. Uh, one of the biggest problems with the Lishy is the spacing. Unfortunately, it's, there's no real guide on, on spacing for those suckers. So you just do what you can with the tools that you have. Uh, much better, much better. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over to the code machine now. Again, we could easily 
do this, just get another key blank now that we figured it out. Uh, line them up, mark it if you need to, and uh, just clip you out another key. Touch it up with a file, and uh, yeah, you'll be good to go on this. But since I have a code machine, we're going to go ahead and set it over to the code machine so we have an accurate cut on it. So we'll move over there and do that real quick. And we're going to bring this cut key with us. And a blank key, and we're gonna bring the lock with us. So let's move over there. All right. Uh, what we are guessing is, what was it? 213321. Three, we're gonna cut that on that XF80 card. Uh, number one, two, skipping number two, number three is three, number four is three, number five is two, and uh, let's give this a try, see what happens, see if we're on point. Actually, let's hold this up to the cut key that we have already cut. Uh, we are definitely deeper on three and four right there. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if this is not a three cut. Oh, you know, that may be a four cut. It's, it's unusual now to have a one next to a four. So we may very well be, uh, we may very well have two, two, four, Four, and these cuts were the same, so those must be must be four. Uh, we can tell that by turning it in our hand here. Maybe we can tell. No, it's kind of too hard to tell. Uh, there is some marks going on. A little bit of mark there. Uh, but again, holding it up to this one, it is considerably deeper. So we may very well have it. Yeah, that's let's, let's cut the uh, let's cut that three and three down to a four. The the spacing is pretty wide on this. If your spacing is wide enough on certain keys, you can get away with your whole uh, one next to a four. So let's go ahead and do three and three and four down to four. course we do need to to brush it off but while we're trying it it's okay oh yep look at that smooth as silk so we are at uh what do we have y'all we had two one four four two one don't believe max for certain things um and another thing most of the time it'll tell you on all these cards it'll tell you to uh duplicate and then like cut it and then move it over to another machine to duplicate. Oh look, we do have a one and a four next to each other. So there is no max here because there's a four and a one. Uh, you can do that by running some codes, some, maybe various codes you can look and tell uh, by running just sample codes to see if you run across any. Um, but we can actually flip this key because we have this one on the end. If you have one of these double-sided keys, they always say code cut one side and then duplicate it on the other. Uh, that's because when you put this key in the machine, it can tilt after it's cut. I mean, obviously you have a flat side here that sits flat. Once you cut it, you could have some tilting action. However, when you have this one on a tip, say if you had a one anywhere along, say four, five, or six, it will sit on that one and then sit over here. So it stays flat. You can actually just put your key in the machine and flip it over and code cut it on the other side thereby reducing the number of keys that you have to use. So again, two, uh, one, four, four, two, and one. And let's go brush it. And 
also, now that we have the actual key made, we can go ahead and do our, uh, let go. Uh, what are you doing? Let go. Uh, okay. Ooh, yes. We can go ahead and do our lubrication thing, so that'll help it. I'm gonna prop that dust cover open and squirty, squirty. Ew, uh, smooth as silk. So there we go, y'all. That is it. Two one four four two one. I'm gonna double check uh, one of my older books just to make sure because every so often on these, you may have. I didn't actually count these wafers in here. We never got any marks on six. So you do have to be careful. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Oh. One, two, Oops, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, five, five. I'm gonna check one of my older books real quick to see. This is a older 2004 foreign auto smart. We're gonna flip over to the Suzuki, 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 Subaru, Subaru, Suzuki. Um, on this one we had what is this? Not a Swift Sidekick Samurai. I think it's a Samurai. Oh yeah, Yukos. There we go. Yukos DC3 uh, Section C. That's this one. Cut to cut tells you the cuts, tells you the Curtis clippers and stuff that you may need, and the code cards. Um, and uh, two RP. Let's go to let's go to the RP the two section. One two samurai. Uh, check owner's manual. Remove passenger door cylinder or read code stamped on lock. That would have made that a lot easier. Disassemble door cylinder or real door cylinder decode. This gives you cuts and positions one through six. Now progression. This cut. In, uh oh. Uh oh, look, right, one through, uh oh. The book's wrong, y'all. This has happened twice so far. This is actually five. Now progression, the cut in position six. So the door only has five. It did sound like we only had five. So that's why number six was not marking. Unfortunately, this vehicle, if you were at the vehicle doing that, that would be easy to do. You would just sit in the vehicle and impression your, your cut down. We have one, we'd go to two, try it, three, try it, four, try it. Unfortunately, this vehicle is out of town. So uh, that means that we are gonna have to furnish this customer uh, four keys. One of them with one on the tip, which would be this one. And uh, now normally whenever I do these code cut, uh, because of that whole flipping upside down thing, we always have gotten into the habit of you always charge people a set amount and they get two keys. Number one, because if you did have to flip it upside down, you wouldn't have a wasted key. A lot of people say, I just need one key. Well, you know, they lost their key in their first place. Always, always, always just make them take two by charging. So we charge a set amount and they get two. That's across all, any code key, any impression key, whatever the case is. Even though I was able to cut this on one key blank, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the two keys. And actually he needs four keys. So we're gonna have to charge extra for that. So we have one key with the one on the tip and then we're gonna come through and make a 214422, 214423, 2144, two, four. Uh, and one of those will work. Unfortunately, that's just something we have to do because this vehicle is out apparently somewhere in the middle of the woods. And if we gave them this key, there's only a 25% chance that this particular key would work. So instead of cutting him two of the same key, we're gonna charge him a code price, a set code price, which will include the two, which will be only one of each key and uh, then charge them uh, whatever amount we decide to do.
for the extra two keys. That way, when he gets out there, he will have a key. He will have at least one key that works. So that's kind of a special circumstance. Otherwise, you would just be at the vehicle anyway and cut it down from there. And you do that, put it in the ignition. If it doesn't turn immediately, you know it's a two. If it doesn't turn after you cut two, you know it's a three. And if it doesn't cut after three, you know it's a four. However, we don't have the vehicle here, so we're just gonna cut them the four keys and uh, be done with this one. So let's go knock that out real quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this wrapped up. If you have any questions or comments on this or any other automotive stuff that I might be able to answer for you, Post it in the comment section. We appreciate you guys watching. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next video.